take Nicky Devlin off, he'd have his stomach cramps, but knew that before the game, so just as soon as he got put in a yellow card, took him off, but aye, everybody's okay, Nicky will be okay for the weekend, good to get 25 minutes or 20 minutes into Joel's legs also, so all good, okay. probably would have picked another match if I had a choice to be fair, but um, nah, big man got in the park, I thought he'd done fairly well when he went on, he looked a wee bit, still looked to have some of that sharpness, obviously the match fitness isn't there, but Joel lives his life correct away from the park, so I don't think he's lost too much yet, and then with the rehab he's had, he's, I don't think he's in a bad place to be honest. Yeah, no, Joel, Joel's making the most of his ability now, um, so I think he knows you only get one crack at this and he's taking that with both hands, so he's got a huge future, he's uh, still a Livingston player, and there's, there's, I'm not no telling you anything you don't know, everybody comes here with the idea of not being here, which is everybody's kind of rationale for coming here. It's a unique selling point. Um, so he knows the better he does, the better chance he's not going to be here in the summer, which helps the club out and helps Joe out. So he's making the most of the opportunity he's got. Aye, I think we've got 10 cup finals. That's us got Celtic out the road, which is a most difficult tie if you include these 11 games, the last batch of fixtures, you include them. Um, that's a big one, Celtic at Parkhead. We've got Rangers coming to Livingston, so there's 10 huge games left. Celtics, done, done and dusty. Came out of that, it wasn't a great result to be fair, but it could have been worse, so quite, I'll take that one in the chin. Um, 10, 10 huge games left to get ourselves in the top six and make sure we stay in the top six. That's exactly what you do after the game. And I don't mean that a lot, but we expected to go to Celtic Park and win. There's a, there's a determination within the squad and myself, and I they put expectations on myself, but I think after the game you've got to be realistic, and I'm very pragmatic in my approach, so you put it to bed after the game, we'll go over the goals a day, and it'll be probably one of the quickest video analysis I've ever done. I'm not sitting watching the full game, we'll go over the three goals, we all know what we should have done better, and we'll focus on Kilmarnock, and really, after the game, I had a quick chat with the boys, never dwelled on it too much, and I explained where we are, where we want to be, and the focus is on Kilmarnock. I enjoy this part of it. Nah, I enjoy this part of it. I think, I don't know, like, when I was a fan and then the split and stuff like that, I wasn't overly sure, but since I've come in and I'm working in the Premier League, I quite enjoy the split. I do enjoy that side of it, so we're all, we're all, it's kind of like a cut-off now, the cut-off is approaching, we need to try and get in the top six, everybody's trying the same things, let's be honest, even if you're sitting 12th in the league now, you're going, if I win my next five games, and this is the kind of rationale you tell yourself, so, nah, I think there's a wee, brings a wee bit of extra spice to the games, because we're all trying to get into the top six, and then once you know what, if you can possibly get into the top six, you've got a fantastic chance of getting European football, so, for us, um, I really enjoy this spell. I really, really enjoy this spell going into this, trying to make the top six.